Buonasera a tutti. Good evening, everybody. Um, I want to thank the Voice of God for my introduction and share with you, all of you, how special it is to be here tonight at this really extraordinary gathering. Uh, distinguished prime ministers, my colleague foreign ministers, distinguished ministers, and distinguished guests all, uh, we thank you for coming out. This is a extraordinary, impressive gathering. A lot of folks from many, many different walks of life, all with great talent, all coming to celebrate a very uh, extraordinary group of awardees this evening. I think it's fair to say that no matter where we come from or what our particular callings might be, we all call ourselves Atlanticists. And I am here to honor the contributions with all of you of a dynamic and increasingly important European leader, Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. It's worth, <clears throat> as we do that and, and putting into context uh, both John Huntsman's, and uh, John, we thank you for your tremendous stewardship here and John's and Fred's uh, comments this evening, I think it's worth reflecting that 100 years ago this month, <clears throat> a generation was being sacrificed on the battlefields of the Somme <clears throat> and Verdun. And 75 years ago, Hitler's army began its savage march to the east, and tens of thousands of Jews were massacred in Odessa. And 50 years ago, a wall of brick and mortar and barbed wire divided Europe as those on one side and those who were just half free. So make no mistake, there is a reason why our predecessors built the EU and forged NATO. And there is a reason why being an Atlanticist is important. There is a reason why visionary leaders from Churchill to Roosevelt to Adenauer to Gasperi, Gasperi sought to build a transatlantic community that would serve as an enduring platform for international stability, prosperity, and peace. And we, all of us here today, and particularly the honorees, are the guardians of that vision. That is why, in recent years, we have stood together on behalf of a sovereign and democratic Ukraine, reaffirmed our solidarity in the face of new threats to the Eastern and Central Europe, mobilized a counter-terrorist coalition that is gaining ground steadily in Iraq and Syria, and negotiated an end to the dangers posed by Iran's nuclear program, and help to frame a global agreement that we must implement with urgency to curb climate change and preserve the environmental health of our planet. Matteo, Matteo Renzi comes to office with a tremendous respect and understanding of all of these challenges. And he also knows that Dealing with them will be the work of many hands. And so it is that he reaches out and he works to grab those hands and work with them. But tonight, the Atlantic Council is able to recognize him as a unique and dynamic force since becoming Prime Minister of Italy, the youngest person ever to hold that post. Let me be clear. This is a high energy guy. And believe me, most people would agree that I know an Energizer bunny when I meet one. Last month, some of you may have heard, at the G20 summit in China, the guests of honor all went for a ride on the boat afterwards. We all went out on this boat around West Lake. And suddenly, a very large fish came flying out of the lake and onto the vessel. Unlike his stunned colleagues, Prime Minister Renzi leapt forward, applied his old football skills, and subdued the Leviathan 
before it had time to swallow even a single global leader. <laughs> so there is a lot to be said for being young and vigorous and for young and vigorous leadership. And as the mayor of Florence, Matteo Renzi was known affectionately as il rotomatore, the scrapper. And it shows a reformer at home, I might add a daring reformer at home. The prime minister has also become an eloquent voice on behalf of shared security and prosperity within Europe and across the Atlantic. Under his leadership, Italy has been at the forefront of defending against violent extremism, training and advising our partners in Iraq, implementing NATO's resolute support mission in Afghanistan. Italy's forward-looking diplomacy under Matteo has also helped to generate fresh hope in Libya, where I've been privileged to work closely with my counterpart, Paolo Gentiloni, and where the Daesh terrorists have been driven back and the new government is becoming more credible by the day. Just as dramatically, my friends, Italy has shown the way in dealing effectively and humanely with the refugee crisis. And we should remember that the movement of refugees and migrants is not just a narrative of desperation, not just people who have been forced to flee homes. It can also be the story, in many cases, of criminals, human traffickers, cramming people onto overloaded boats, taking their money, and then not caring whether they live or die. And that is why Prime Minister Renzi has taken a comprehensive approach, supporting a diplomatic end to the war in Syria, addressing the economic factors that contribute to migration, and coming through when emergencies rise. Italy has helped more than 450,000 endangered migrants to reach shore safely in the past three years. Between the United States and Italy, we all know there have always been an amazing set of ties, and there always will be. Deep and abiding ties of family and friendship and history and culture. And it is cemented by shared values, invigorated by people-to-people -people contacts, and yes, enlivened by delicious food and sometimes even a glass of wine. Here in America, a country and a continent named for another son of Florence, we are delighted to see Italy being led boldly in the right direction and in full support of the transoceanic bonds long nurtured by this Atlantic Council. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege tonight to introduce you for this Global Citizen Award, the distinguished Prime Minister of Italy, Matteo Renzi. Mr. Secretary of State, distinguished guest, uh, Governor Antman, President, uh, I, 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 there, it's an incredible emotion because uh, I believe Atlantic Council is one of the most important and prestigious institutions. I believed until today <laughs> because the decision to give this um, very important uh, hour to me is uh, a signal of decline, but I think the future could change. Jokes apart, I, I really, I really, I really excited for this opportunity. And uh, John, thank you so much for your time, for your words, for your great friendship, uh, and uh, obviously for Italy, United States of America, uh, are not simply uh, the best uh, ally, but it's the best friend. Uh, it's the, the model and. Uh, uh, our, our friendship is particularly important in this moment, but the decision to be with, uh, with us tonight is an incredible gift for me and uh, for all the Italian delegation. Um, global citizen. This is a time in which globalization uh, means a lot of things. 
I believe uh, incredible importance the globalization for the alliance in the difficult theaters of war, uh, in the difficult times. Uh, globalization uh, is a word we, we use every, every moment, every day, but globalization is also a message of fear in this moment for the new generation. And it's very strange because uh, my father and my grandfather think the future, uh, thinking about the future has a great moment, has a great possibility. In Europe, in this moment, the future is a message of fear, of preoccupation, of worry. So we, we have to change the perception of future. And globalization is the key to give a message of hope against the aid, a message of confidence against the preoccupation. Globalization means in Italy and in Europe, save the men and the women who risk the life in the sea, Mediterranean Sea. We can lose the votes, we can lose the point on the service, but we cannot lose the dignity of a human being. And this is particularly important in this moment. Then we can, uh, and we, we, must, uh, we must have a strategy for Africa where globalization means uh, investing in the new technologies to, to, to give an opportunity to new generation uh, to share some ideas and values on the social network, but also to give a message of importance of human friendship and human relation. Globalization means a lot of things. Global citizens, Global citizen force us to, to believe about how many important is uh, the expression citizen. Uh, there is a, a Latin expression, citizen in, uh, in Roman, the old ancient Rome means uh, chivis. And this is a particularly important because chivis is the belong to community, belong to city. And belong to the city is not simply, is not simply to belong to a community of men and women, but a community of ideals, of values. What is today the Chivis? Chivis today means uh, belong to cultural ideal, belong to an expectation of soul. Not only, not only the, the, the belong to normal community of men and women. So global citizen for me today means a lot of things. I believe for the future and for the new generations, global citizen is not a award, but it's a responsibility. Uh, a man who is here, not, there is a Shinzo Abe, and I'm really jealous of Shinzo Abe because uh, the image of Shinzo, Shinzo is a great friend, organized a very great G7 this year, and I hope I can uh, uh, organize a very good G7 next year as Shinzo, but particularly Shinzo present himself as a Super Mario during Olympic Games, uh, and I'm really jealous because I'm not sure Italy could uh, organize an Olympic Games, but particularly I'm not in condition to, to show myself as a Super Mario. I will try, I will try. But there is the other guy, Winter Marsalis, who I, I stole words of um, an epic uh, expression, an uh, epic oratorio composed by Winston Marsalis when he used this expression, freedom is the trying. And I think to be global citizen is exactly that. Freedom is the trying, trying to be a better man and a better woman in a moment in which the fear is uh, the great uh, nightmare for the new generation. So from uh, Rome, the city of Chivis, from uh, Italy, the country of uh, beauty, I really, really honored and I consider a privilege. I come from Florence and I finish with my city, not Rome, but Florence. And, um, Florentine people received as other Italian people a lot of things to the United States of America. The freedom, first of all. The freedom during World War II. 
But we gave also something to the United States of America. The name. Yes, don't worry. Because uh, Amerigo Vespucci, Amerigo Vespucci come from Florida. It's good because if we des you decide Amerigo, because uh, if you think about uh, my dear Vespuccian people, it's not very good. The United States of Vespuccia, it not sounds so well. But Amerigo give the name to the, this incredible country. I think the real challenge for the new generation, for the new leaders, is try to give the name to the future. With a leader as John Kerry and uh, other people who support us day by day in the difficult theaters, we try to search the freedom in the trying, and we search really to give a name to the future of the world. Thank you so much. It's really a great privilege. <laughs>